In June 1942, two of the most modern aircraft carriers in the US Navy and the Imperial Japanese Navy were the USS Enterprise and the HIGMS Chicago. So let's take a look at their dimensions, defensive capabilities and aircraft loadout. The length for the Enterprise was 251 meters or 824 feet, whereas the Sukako was 258 meters or 845 feet long. Looking at the overall dimensions, one could assume that the USS Enterprise would be about the weight of the Sukako, but according to various sources, this wasn't the case at all. Most values differ, but all sources have one thing in common, namely that the displacement of the Tsukaku is significantly higher than that of the Enterprise. Since I couldn't find a proper explanation, I started to ask questions. And thanks to several people mentioned in the description, here are the answers. One aspect to consider is that the Enterprise was built under treaty regulations, while the Tsukaku wasn't. So the real values of the Enterprise are probably higher than on the official records. But lies are only one part of the story. Additionally, there were clear differences in terms of construction and equipment. First, the Enterprise had a welded hull, which is lighter than a riveted hull of the Shukaku class. Second, the Yorktown class carriers had only one hangar, and it was an open hangar, which requires less weight, while the Shukaku class had two closed hangars. Third, the Enterprise was less armored and had weaker underwater protection in the Shukaku. Fourth, the Shukaku had considerably more horsepower, which requires bigger and stronger machinery. These are the main factors that contribute to the considerable higher displacement of the Tsukaku. Now in terms of anti-aircraft weaponry, in mid-1942 the Enterprise had 8 5-inch, 4 quad 1.1-inch and 30 20mm guns. The Tsukaku had 16 5-inch guns and 12 triple 25mm guns. One way to compare anti-aircraft defense is with some simple math. Let's take the effective rate of fire, multiply it with the weight of the shell and with the number of guns. Then sum it all up and we get around 6000 kg per minute for the Enterprise and 4000 kg for the Tsukaku. So every minute the Enterprise could throw a Panzerkampfwagen 1 at you, whereas the Tsukaku could only manage a light scout gun. Besides putting out one third less stopping weight than the Enterprise, the Tsukaku had another problem. The tracking speed and the fire control system of the Japanese guns were inferior, especially of the 25mm guns. Thus the effectiveness of those shots put in the air was considerably less than that of the USS Enterprise. In terms of radar, the Shukaku class carriers originally had no radar. Both ships were later equipped with radars, but that was after the Battle of Midway. The lack of radar was a major weakness, because the only way to detect enemy aircraft was with optics and the Mark I eyeball. In contrast, the Enterprise was equipped with a radar that could detect small aircraft at 3000 meter altitude at the range of about 90 kilometers or 55 miles. In terms of passive defense, the Chicago class carriers were better equipped than the Yorktown class carriers. The maximum value of Tsukaku's belt armor was about 6.5 inch, whereas the Enterprise had a maximum of 4 inch. This difference was similar for the deck armor, with a maximum of 2.6 inches versus 1.5 inch for the Enterprise. Furthermore, the Shukaku class featured a more sophisticated torpedo protection system than the Yorktown class carriers. The following aircraft loadouts are for the Battle of Midway for the Enterprise in June 1942 and for the Battle of Pearl Harbor for the Tsukaku in December 1941. Because the Tsukaku nor the Shukaku were present at the Battle of Midway, but the order of battle for the Japanese squadrons was similar. In terms of fighter, the Tsukaku had 15 Zeros and the Enterprise had 27 Wildcats. The Tsukaku had 27 Kates, whereas the Enterprise had only 14 Devastator Torpedo Bombers. For the Dive Bomber Force, the Tsukaku again fielded 27 planes. In contrast to the 38 SPD Dauntlesses for the Enterprise. In total, the Tsukaku had 69 operational aircraft and the Enterprise 79. Yet the Tsukaku had another 12 spare aircraft in storage could be made operational, thus increasing the total number to 81 aircraft, while the maximum load was 48 aircraft. But the Enterprise also had less than the maximum load off of 90 aircraft. Now there are two interesting aspects here. First, the total number of planes of the Enterprise is higher than that of the Tsukaku, although the Tsukaku had two hangars. Second, there's a significant higher amount of dive bombers on the American side. Why was this the case? The US and Japanese approach towards storing and servicing aircraft was different. The US used the so-called deck park. As a result, US carriers used the hangar space and the flight deck to store planes, whereas the Japanese were limited to the hangar space. Now why are there so many dive bombers on the US side? 
This is due to three reasons. First, the US Navy assumed that the torpedo bombers were inferior and kept them mainly for attacking battleships. Second, the US Navy thought that the dive bomber attack is better suited for limiting the flight operations of an enemy carrier. And third, the US doctrine lay an emphasis on carrier-based scout bombers, which could also be used as normal dive bombers. In contrast, the Japanese used scout planes from cruisers and battleships to perform recon. To conclude, the biggest drawbacks of the Japanese Shukaku class carriers lay in their limited defense capabilities due to a lack of radar, inferior AA defense and weak fire control. Whereas the US Navy increased the number of fighters early on to strengthen further their active defense. Nevertheless, the Shukaku class carriers were good or even great carriers, but against an enemy that constantly and quickly adapted, a small flaw can become a major flaw in a short amount of time. After all, the best weapon, tactic or strategy can be outclassed with a proper counter. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. And see you next time.